Yes, and the Sabbath is a very beautiful Sabbath day today. And we are all joining together at Hopeside Community Church. And it's such a blessing for us. clean our heart, we will be acceptable in the sight. So let's pray for that clean heart. Yes, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me.
good morning and happy Sabbath to one and all. What an opportunity once again to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to his word. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you in the name of Jesus. Um, we do have Sister Pramila Pedapuri with us. Welcome once again to be a part of us and supporting us in the anchor. And each of us who have been seated here, I want to welcome you all. I want to thank you for being a part of Hopeside Community Adventist Church. Uh, God is so gracious to each one of us. Let us thus far marvelously, miraculously, what more could we not be thankful for, for the way that how he has been able to lead us in the paths of righteousness. We praise his name and I want to welcome each one of you for this divine hour. Before we could be able to begin, we have few announcements to be made. I want you to please pay close attention. We are in the first week of the month, uh, which is focused on the social matters. Here's the quote to reflect on this thing. We need joy as we need air. We need love as we need water. We need each other as we need the earth we share. What a beautiful uh, thought. And this was written by Maya Angelou. A beautiful thought. We need joy as we need air. We need love as we need water. We need each other as we need the earth we share. Of course, we don't want to have a prophecy live on every Saturday at 3 p.m. EST and Sunday 9 a.m. You can join by Zoom or please to watch the live okay, on YouTube. We do have midweek prayer meetings on every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. And of course, the Friday Vespers at 8 p.m. You can participate in all the Hope Side services by Zoom and YouTube live. Women's Bible Study is on every Saturday at 4 p.m. EST by Zoom only, and uh, which will be uh, conducted by Dr. Sonia Selvin. We do have pray fasting every Tuesday at 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we do have a WhatsApp group and uh, name fast, uh, fast, uh, pray fasting to join. This is to pray for mainly for our building project and uh, any other prayer request that we have. And the fasting format is based on individual preferences and uh, as to what one may wish to fast from and how much one can fast during the time set aside only for fasting and praying. And I know that the Lord will be able to bless us as we join together in prayer. And I know that His mercy will endure in each one of our lives. And these are the few announcements that I had. Does the church have any announcements to be made for? If not, God is good all the time. All the time. God is it is time to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. To begin with, let's all join in singing this beautiful song, Crown Him with Many Crowns. That will be our opening song. Let's join our voices in singing, crown him with many crowns. Let's be happy and praise God from our hearts. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Heart, how the heavenly anthem groans.
it's time for intercessory prayer. Do you have any prayer request? Those online can also share if you have any prayer request or yes, praise sorry. reports. Yes, from Laka. Um, I would like to say thank you for that welcome, Pastor. Um, I am just under the weather with the cold because of the change in this weather, which is terrible. But uh, just keep me in your prayers, otherwise I would have been at church today. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I just need prayers for me. Yes, definitely, from Laka. I have a praise okay. and uh, a request. Uh, praise is that all of us who are here are safe and sound and we are, uh, what do you say, uh, withholding the weather within us. God has given us the grace and we are here. And for my family who is also doing well without sickness and, uh, and whatever the season. And the request is my, my daughters in laws both are down with fever, cold, cough, both of them. It was very sad when I entered the house. It was so lonely. Usually she greets me with a smile. But then today, like she was in the bed, I was feeling so sad and lonely all around. So please pray for that family that she will become well. And she didn't go to school because of that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. We will keep you and your in-laws. Daughters in-laws. Daughters in I have yes. praise and praise. Um, it's so nice. It's so nice to uh, feel the uh, uh, feeling the breath of air again Amen. because I was so sick for so many weeks, and um, God has really protected and guided me, and He made me to recover from my sickness, and I'm thankful to God and. Um, Second is, I, as we are praying for Sheila and uh, her uh, divorce came through, the judge has signed the paper. So they both are separated and I really want to ask for God's guidance and uh, God's protection and both of their lives as they go on separate ways. And uh, my ex son in law his name is Joseph, so please remember him also in his prayer. In the prayer. We'll, we're glad to uh, see you back, Amudaka. And it's nice that you're well again <laughs> after weeks of uh, sickness and cold. We'll remember Sheila and Joseph also in our prayers. Do you have any other prayer requests or praise reports? Uh, I have one more. I have a, a, my colleague, uh, she's been uh, telling me that her right right hand this middle finger isn't working it is it is swollen she's not like straight like this this middle finger is bent like this not so like this it should be uh, yeah it is a kind of because whenever I try to help her and massage her it, uh, she experiences a lot of pain the same is happening with another colleague also he also has a, the same is happening with another person also but all the three of them are uh, are on the same boat with this uh, finger, middle finger, very painful. So please pray for them so that the healing, so that because uh, every time she deals with the resident, uh, they are uh, you know like she cannot do, and I uh, I help her because I know that she can't do without, especially the right hand, and she's a right handed, so she's not able to do. So please remember her in your prayers. Unspoken request, please. Yes, Also pray for Mary Naka, my cousin, mm -hmm. for her uh, recovery from whatever that is ailing her. And yes, I praise that uh, Mary Naka is a, I got a message that uh, she says that she's feeling much better. She's Amen. in the process of recovery, so we'll just keep praying. Thank you for the prayer. Okay, so let's all bow down our heads reverently for prayer. Let's pray.
dear Heavenly Father, what in heaven, we at this time come to you with heart full of gratitude for the manifold blessings you have been giving us during the past days. We acknowledge, O oh Father, that every blessing that we receive in our lives is only from you. And, O oh Lord, we acknowledge that you are the most gracious, compassionate, loving God who gives us everything that we need. We ask you, O oh Father, to forgive all the mistakes so that our prayers would be heard. O oh Lord, at this time we come to your presence with many prayer requests and praise reports. O oh Father, we pray for Hopeside Church. May every member who comes to this church be blessed. May their families be blessed. May they be protected. We also pray for the building project, O oh Father. If it is your will, help it to be successful and help us as we meet people in getting this building project done. Help us, O oh Father, to have a church building so that many will come and worship you and praise your name. May only your name be glorified, not ours, O oh Father. It is to serve you. We only want to serve you and not to boast about our ability to do things. O oh Father, help us to be humble. Let us not be proud. Keep us safe in your arms, O oh Father. We also pray that many church members join our church so that we will expand and serve people, just as you have told us, to reach out to people so that they will learn more about you. Oh Lord, help us to be committed to your cause. We at this time pray for Pramilaka as she is not feeling well. Oh Lord, please be with her and give her the heavenly blessing so that she will be healed. Be with her and her husband and children and grandchild. Bless them, O oh Father, abundantly. We remember Nalini as she has praise reports for blessing her family. We ask you, O oh Father, that you will bless them more. We also pray for her daughters, in-laws, as they are not well. O oh Lord, please stretch forth your healing hand upon them so that they will be healed, so that she will, they will again go for work. We also remember Amudaka. We thank you for bringing her safely from India. We thank you, O oh Lord, that she's in good health now. We thank you, O oh Father, that Sheila and Joseph are now happy and they've decided, although they've decided to go their own path, we ask you to be with them give them blessings. May they take the right decisions in their life as they are young. Oh Father, we do not know what you have in store for them, but we ask you, oh Lord, that you will bless them abundantly. May they find peace in you. May they be good friends. May they help each other in times of need. We also pray for Mary Naka, oh Lord. We hear that you have been blessing her and you have been healing her, and she has been recovering. Oh Father, we thank you and praise you. Please continue be with, to be with Mary Naka so that she will be, be a witness to you. We pray for me and my family, with Michael and Nathaniel as they are growing up. May they grow up spiritually strong. We pray for Pastor Jeffrey. Be with him and his family. Please provide them all that they need in their lives. We pray for all the church members who are not able to join us today. Uh, may your blessings be with them as well. We also pray for those watching us online. Please bless them abundantly. We pray for all the other unspoken requests. We pray for uh, Amudaka who has unspoken requests. We have uh, Mariaka who is here who have unspoken requests. And we pray for all, we pray for Sarah who is celebrating her birthday today. Oh Lord, as she has been here in this earth for many years and you have blessed her to be a service to the people around her, we ask you, O oh Father, that you will continue blessing her and keeping her safe. We ask you that 
she will be blessed on this on her birthday and beyond the sabbath day help us to keep the sabbath holy we are all sinners and we have come short of your glory we ask you that you will help us to remember the sabbath and keep it holy and restrain ourselves from doing the things that we want to do we want you we want to serve you we want to be a witness for you and we want to go home when you come be with us throughout this day we ask in jesus name amen, amen. Let's join again for the offertory. I like to bring your thoughts again to our a very familiar story about the the widow with two mites. She gave him all that she had. The Bible te the Jesus uh, tells us that she was the only person who gave all that we had, all that she had from her heart, because she felt the need of the church service. that needs to be going on she felt the need that the church, the church must progress so let us also have the same thought as a widow have that that the church must grow no matter what may be our resources the mother widow gave all that she had she did not think twice i don't have for tomorrow she had all that she gave all that we had so give let we pray last god to give us that kind of a heart to render what is due to him Let's pray for the offering. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us through this whole week. Lord, we pray for the offering that is to be collected. Mighty Father, we pray that this offering will be used for your cause, and it will be wholly and solely used for your cause only, O oh Lord. Bless the hands that has given them, and bless it fourfold, O oh Lord, that it may be used wisely for your glory. In Jesus holy and righteous name I pray. Amen. Good afternoon and Shabbat Shalom. Today's scripture reading is found in Joshua um, chapter one, verses one to two. Please stand for the scripture reading. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. Moses my servant is dead now therefore rise go over this jordan thou and all this people unto the land which i do give to them even to the children of israel may the lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and uh, today's sermon is about faith and fear faith over fear so many times we have the fear factors we are uh, fear of this and we are fear of that but today's message is going to enable us and to make us strong in our spiritual walk with god amen amen let's join our voices to sing a theme song we are here to praise you we are here to praise you lift our hearts and sing We are here to give you the best that we can.
How you doing, my friend? Hey, Carl. How you doing? Long time, let me see. Not really. <laughs> Happy Sabbath once again. Thank you for the beautiful song that we could be able to sing. God in his own infinite mercy has blessed each one. What an opportunity to be a part of him, right? We praise his holy name. A day of rest and gladness where we could join together, worshiping him and praising his holy name. Very happy that uh, sir is there with us and uh, you doing, my friend? Okay, absolutely fine. Okay, welcome, sir. Yeah, I'm fine. The topic today has been entitled as faith over fear. Faith over fear. Anxiety disorders have surpassed depression and alcoholism and it is number one mental health problem in America anxiety disorder is the number one health problem in the United States of America you know anxietists you know stem from three basic fears the other name for fear is phobia so anxiety you know, stems from this three basic factor. Number one, anxiety comes because of the fear of death. Many people feel that they're going to die soon, and anxiety starts groping their life. Number two, fear of men. You know, many people doesn't even want to speak with one another because they fear, I don't know, what will they think about me? How will they respond for me? And uh, will they be cooperative? Will they be good, bad? Fear of men is the second cause of anxiety. Number three, the fear of failure causes people for anxiety. Number one, fear of death. Number two, Fear of men. And number three, fear of failures. And these are the three main causes for anxiety disorders. Psychologists believe that anxieties arise from a state of disconnection. You know, the primary disconnection is from God. Once you are disconnected with God, anxiety takes over in every angle. The primary disconnection is from God, followed closely with being disconnected from the church. And the people who have been disconnected from the church also feels anxiety. Many people are so facing this anxiety problem because they never had a meaningful relationship with others. You know? They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, where there is no peace at all. That's what the book of Jeremiah talks about. We're talking about peace, peace everywhere, but there is no peace, but there are only pieces. If we have to look into the whole nations, what is happening in around the nations, uh, you know, the leaders have become failures. Everybody feels that we want to enjoy ourselves to bring peace on this earth, but every country has been a failure. There are no peace, but only pieces. And that's the reason the Bible says in the four Gospels, peace I live with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And that's what the words of Jesus is all about. The world is unable to give that peace which longs in the soul of our lives. Only Jesus can be able to replace the peace which you and I could be able to enjoy. And that's the reason the Bible says do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not fear. May not anxiety take your life. Uh, put all your burdens on Jesus uh, that he is there to care for you and me. 
you know, the middle age man feels, okay, called to switch careers, to do something bold for God, but fears hold him back. We want to do something for God, but fear is the one which holds each one of us back. A woman feels trapped in a marriage that is painful and abusive, but fear keeps her from acknowledging reality and seeking help. Do we agree with that? Yes. A long time Christian has a hard time loving God because he or she is afraid that he will do bad things to her. Hmm. When life goes too well for too long, she gets nervous. She's waiting for her other shoe to be down there. So it means only when I'm in difficult position, the Lord is going to be there with me. And that's the misconception of many people. Fear grips them too. A young woman feels pressured by her parents to follow a course for a life that she does not want to. But fear prevents her from speaking the truth. Many times we have pushed our children. They say that we want you to study this course. The child might not like. And the child is unable to express to the parents or anyone. Nah. Okay. Because she knows that she will not be appreciated. An elderly man is afraid of dying. He has never told anyone this. He is afraid of what others might think of him. If they should find out what they know about. Okay. He feels about. A successful businessman, this is life in putting in stocks and shares, right? What happens? He also has a lot of fear. Okay, if the stocks goes down and my money is absolutely lost, fear grips him. You know, parents in Pakistan keep a vigil in a hotel wondering if they will ever see their missionary children again. Fear. You know, I love being a Christian. I won't have to fear any anything anymore because I fear God. Because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, fear God. If you and I are there fearing God, you don't need to fear about anything. And that's the beauty of Christianity. Jesus gives us hope. Jesus removes our anxiety. Your burden is the Lord's burden. Your happiness is the Lord's happiness. His way of life becomes your way of life. So you don't need to fear because you have Jesus with you. And that's the reason Jesus says, uh, I am there with you. Do not be troubled. I'll be part of you. Do not be anxiety take over you. Let Jesus take over your anxiety. You know, at the height of her popularity, a person called Anne Landers, she is one of the psychologists, supposedly received nearly 10,000 letters per month. How many letters? 10,000 letters per month. Your prior to her email, you know, asked about the dominant theme of the letter. What is that main thing that people try to write to you in your email? You know, she replied, fear. <laughs> She said people were afraid of losing their health, losing their wealth, and losing their loved ones. People, she said, were afraid of life itself. Isn't that true? Life itself has become a burden for many of them. They fear for life itself. Nothing has changed. We fear our neighbors. We fear our doctors. We fear our police. We fear our lawyers. We fear our courts, our governments, our schools, our food. We fear of losing our jobs, losing our health. We fear for the IRS. Uh -huh. We fear of the TV. We fear for the criminals, for the drugs. We fear for cholesterol, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coffee, fat, butter. And now many fear their own kids. But we fear the unknown the most. We are so health conscious, we don't want to eat that, we don't want to take this, why? Fear! We fear our own children. What is the guarantee they're going to take care of us? But we fear the unknown the most. Because future is not known, nobody has been able to predict what is going to happen tomorrow, and we fear the most what is going to happen tomorrow. Fear is gripping the whole world today. 
the number one factor. What I see going on in this world right now is this fear, 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 fear. We have allowed ourselves to enter into an agreement with the fear. We all have enjoined ourselves and allowed ourselves to enter into an agreement with fear. We have given fear permission to take our lives today. The whole world has allowed fear to take control of our lives. We have given permission for fear to enter into our lives in every angle and has taken over in every part of our lives. Where there is fear, there is no faith. Underline that word in your life. Where there is fear, there is no faith. Either you have faith or you have fear. No faith, no trust, no courage, no confidence. Make sense? If you don't have faith, there is no trust. There is no courage. There is no confidence. Why? We are allowed fear to enter our lives. Anything you want to do, you don't trust. You don't have courage. You don't have confidence. You want to move forward, no trust, no confidence, no courage. You know, the first king of the children of Israel was who? Who was the first king of the children of Israel? Saul. King Saul. Saul was fearful. Go read the book of First Samuel chapter 17, you'll be able to understand the important implication of what Saul feared about. He was not out front fighting the battle, no. You remember the Goliath? You know, Saul was the king. Goliath was trampling in every angle. Saul didn't know what to do. He was afraid, right? He was unable to go for war. Why? What gripped him? Fear gripped him in every angle. He was not in his tent. He was worried. The first king of children of Israel saw was worried. You know, rational for the fearful. One thing you and I have to understand. Evaluate life based on fear and how things appear to them. Just imagine the Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us? Did Saul ever think about it? God is there with me. He is the one who instilled to be a part here to be the king. It is not that I want to be the king. It is he that wanted me to be the king. He forgot that element of it. What was being seen in front of his eyes was what? Goliath. The big man. Why? Saul invited or Saul gave permission for fear to engulf his life. He forgot that God is in charge. He is the one who's been able to give him all the power. He was there with him. He forgot about it. If you and I forget that the Lord has been created, you and me. If you and I forget that the Lord has been created this world. If you and I forget that the Lord in his own infinite mercy is in control of every situation of your life. Uh, you and I have given permission for the fear to engulf our lives. Fear cripples those in its grip. You know, the conditions of the fearful can neither lead or be led. People who have been able to be in fear, they can never lead or be led. So which means uh, you can never have the right frame of mind to move forward boldly because uh, there is no faith, because there is no trust. When there is fear, no trust. When there's fear, there is no courage. When there is fear, there is no confidence. You can never be able to move on. You have been crippled in every angle of life. You know, Saul was not leading. He was being led astray. The Bible says it very clearly, and without faith it is impossible to please God, right? For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. If you and I diligently seek him and is ever willing to be found. And that's what the reason so beautifully says, here I stand at the door and knock. You're fearful, anxiety has taken your heart. The Bible says it very clearly for you and me that allow God to be operative. 
if you and I have given permission for fear to engulf our life, uh, allow Jesus to engulf your life so that fear might be chased away. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what part of impossible don't you understand? Because fear cripples faith. What we don't understand is what? Fear cripples faith. No faith because they were trusting in themselves. If you and I are trusting in ourselves, uh, fear enters and there is no faith there. There is no trust because they were covering uh, in the trenches. You see what happened? What happened? What happened uh, during the time of Saul? What were people doing? They were hiding from, you know, from Goliath. Where was Saul? He was not in the stand. He was somewhere out. Uh, he didn't want to encounter Goliath at all because of fear. He never understood that the presence of the Lord is there with him. He is the one who anointed him to be the best king of the children of Israel. He forgot. And what did the, the soldiers do? They were hiding right in the trenches. Fear. Anxiety. When you give permission for fear to be a part of your life, it cripples you in every end. What happened? If you go to the book of 1st Samuel chapter 17, you'll be able to understand the beautiful story of King Saul. Okay? They had no faith, they had no trust, and they had no courage because they could not find a man who could be able to find whom? Goliath. Nobody with the children of Israel was able to encounter what? Goliath. Do you and I do face the same thing? Do you feel that nobody on this earth could be able to fight for you? Yes. The children of Israel, they had no confidence because of the example of the leader. Who was the leader? Saul was the leader. What was his example? Fear. Unable to do anything. He went and hid. And the whole children of Israel also what? Hid by themselves. And Saul is telling there was not a man that could be able to encounter. When fear grips your life, no faith, no trust, no courage, no confidence. Do we face the same problem today? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen to this one. Where there is no fear, there is no faith. What happened to Saul? Fear engulfed him. Faith was vanished. If you have to look into the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 to 34, you will be able to understand a very big concept that is faithlessness begets fear while fearlessness begets faith. Understand and mark that word. Fear faithfulness. Faithlessness begets fear. Which means uh, faithlessness gives birth to fear. Why fearlessness give birth to faith? Are we faithless or are we fearless? You know, faith increases to more, more faith. That's the reason the Bible says, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. That's what the Bible says. And that not done in faith is sin. The fearless or a person who is godly or the person where God dwells in every individual's heart is a fearless man. He perceives the truth, he says. The faithful man knows his deliverer. It is not that you can deliver yourself. No. Saul was thinking about himself that there is nobody to deliver from Goliath because he relied upon himself. Fear gripped his heart. He gave permission for fear to engulf his life in every moment of his life. And that's the reason he was a failure in that area. He was looking for somebody and he could know, he could not see anyone who could be able to fight Goliath. <coughs> Same thing happens with you and me. When fear grips you and me, there is nothing that you can be able to see, only failures. Fear is the opposite of faith. Faithlessness bears fear. Fearlessness bears faith. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, 
there is courage because God is trustworthy. That's the reason the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, uh, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will what? Hear us and he will provide us. And that is the promise that God has been given to you and me. Anything you ask in my name, and the Bible says that I'm ever ready to be able to dispatch that immediately. Have you experienced that? Have you seen anyone on this earth would be able to say, you tell me this that you want, I'm going to give you immediately. Do you have any individuals who could tell, say, tell that? No. If you want to ask help from somebody, says, come tomorrow. Hmm. If you want to go and ask somebody, say, so you can know, but give me some time. If I want to ask help from somebody, okay, he'll say, so most probably I don't have so much of cash. Okay, if you want to go and ask help from somebody, they don't give it, you know, completely. They don't give it completely. They, they might say that I will have only a little because we are singing in a different angle altogether. But the Lord says it very clearly. You come to me and ask, and I'm telling you, it's going to be dispatched immediately and to the fullest. And if you have to have, achieve that, not fear, but faith has to anchor your life and my life. You know, and that's the reason David comes into the picture of a Samuel chapter 17. When Saul becomes a failure, when fear has engulfed Saul, he was not fit to lead or to be led. Your mind is absolutely blank. He was filled with anxiety. Anxiety begets fear, so he didn't know what to do. He was looking, okay, something miracle could be able to happen. He never even recognized that God is the one who instituted him and put him to be a part of the kingdom because anxiety and fear engulfed his life in every angle. I want to ask you this question once again Do you trust God or do you trust fear? David comes into existence. You know, David didn't use the armor. You know that, right? Why do you think so he didn't use the armor? Trust God. Okay, why do you think so he didn't use the armor? Yes, he trusted God. But I know that because he didn't have time to test it. <laughs> you get my point? Okay. He didn't have time to test it. He trusted the sling. Why? Because he had used it in the what? Past. And it proved useful. Yes. Wow. My, there is a beautiful lesson that you and I have to learn. We have similar issues today. What is an issue? We are hesitant to trust something because it hasn't been fully tested. David never wanted to use the arms. Why? He never tested. He said, I don't want this. But he used what he tested and trusted. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. He was hesitant. You and I are hesitant to trust something because it hasn't been fully tested. That which we have fully tested, we are able to trust. Yes. Where there is no fear of man, there is active opposition to God's enemies. Never forget this one. Active opposition to God's enemies. <coughs> you know, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 20, the Bible says, David rises early, early in the morning. He usually rises in verse 22. He runs to the battle. Where? Goliath was there, okay? He rises up early in the morning. Of course, he speaks with Saul and he says, I'm going to take care of the whole situation. Nothing to worry about. It is not that I, the Lord, will be able to go before you. And he rises up early in verse 20. In verse 22, he runs to the battle. Verse 35, he goes after the enemy. And verse 48, he runs to meet the enemy. And verse 54, he runs to finish the job. Saul, who was ordained as the king, was running away because fear has engulfed. But you see here, David, where faith has been engulfed, well, what did he do? He rises up early, he runs to the battle, he runs to meet the enemy, he runs to finish the job. How do we 
encounter our enemies today, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Are you encountering your enemy with fear or fearlessness? This is what David did. We call it a language chota, right? Short guy. Yeah. Bold opposition of God's enemies. He was willing to encounter. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 26, the Bible says, Jesus says that I have no fear of them. You know, people were willing to, you know, catch him and put him into the prison and things like that. What happened? Was Jesus feared? No. Why? Was anxiety taken over him? No. Why? Because he trusted in his father. He knows his enemies. David runs to meet the enemy. I want to ask you this question. Do we run to meet our enemy to face him? Only fearless person can be able to do that. Only the person who has Jesus in a heart, mind, and soul can be able to run to our enemies and face the enemy and defeat the enemy just like David did so. Spiritual opposition of God's enemy. You know, when we talk about the enemy, uses man made armor, uses taunts, insults, and intimidation. Okay? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. But the Bible is absolutely very clear for you and me. If you and I have to tackle the enemy, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't face enemies greater than David did. Never forget. You and I don't face enemies greater than David did. Every step of his life he had enemies. Every step that he took, he had enemies. Okay. We know that how he faced that. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't face enemies greater than David did. Satan still works through fear, doubt, worry, and anxiety of our lives. It is his work. He is the one who wants to destroy our life and our soul. He is the one who doesn't want us to fight him. You see? Anxiety, fear, Satan, he is the one who gets, so he doesn't want us to encounter him. I know because individually encountering Satan will be impossible because he's much more powerful than every any one of us, right? You need another external power, and David did it so right, and he says, I come to you, Goliath, in the name of Jesus, he says. If you and I have to encounter our enemy, go in the name of Jesus. So Satan will not be able to see a sinful man, but Satan will be able to see Jesus in our lives. Satan sees two things in our life. A fearless man that happens when Jesus is there with us, or a fearful man where anxiety and worry takes over us. Where are we? Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have victory in Jesus and Jesus alone. And that's what demonstrated in the life of David. If you and I have to be victorious, if you and I have to win the battle, you and I could be failure. If you have Jesus, he gives victory. We fear God. That is it. Nothing else. That's the reason the Bible says, fear God and give glory to him. And the rest is taken care of. I'm so happy to be a Christian for one different reason because uh, Jesus is there with me. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. God with us. Emmanuel. Jesus is there with us. He is just the same yesterday. He is just the same today. And is just the same forevermore to the very breath of our life. He is the one who never sleeps. He is the one who never slumbers. He is ever willing to give us the victory over our enemies, sir. Because Satan will not fear you and me. No, Satan also do has fear. He has fear over Jesus because Jesus was victorious on the cross of Calvary. And Satan was defeated on the cross of Calvary. So he fears Jesus. So allow Jesus to be a part of your life. And Satan will immediately run away. Your anxiety, your fear will absolutely disappear because faith takes over. Faith takes over. We fear God. That's it. Anything other than that, 
I do consider it as a sin. Just fear God. That's it. Nothing else. You know, perfect love casts out fear. Where there is no fear, there is great faith. Where there is great faith, there is great pleasure towards God. We need to break our agreement with fear and take away the permission of it in our lives and allow Jesus to be a part of a faithful partnership. And you see the change happening in your life and my life. Every battle is won. Every fear is cast down. Every anxiety is being removed. Everything that you feel that you are unable to do it, and I'm telling you, you will come with a positive results in every battle. My challenge to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is to fear God only. Go with me to the book of Joshua. The Bible text that we are taking. Okay, Joshua. Okay, chapter 1. Verse 1 and 2. What does the Bible say? And can anyone read of it? Or I can read that issue of the prophet. Joshua. It was in the slide. Huh? It was in the slide. Yeah, yeah. But I won't read from verse 1 to 9. Okay, that's a beautiful uh, okay. Okay, thing. Joshua chapter 1. Was one to nine. I want you to make sure that you know get this important aspect of it, so that you'll be able to understand a very important thing that you want to have to learn from this. Okay, faith over uh, fear. Okay, does anyone get it? Want to read, or should I be able to read that? Okay, Joshua. Let me read that for out of you as we conclude this message today. Joshua, chapter one. Okay, verse 1 to 9. Listen to this one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is what? Dead now. Therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I came to them, even to the children of Israel. Now, Moses is no more. Uh, Joshua is about to leave. Okay, lead is asking you and me just like Joshua. I want you to get up. I want you to take the armor of what I've been given. Just follow my instruction and lead the children of Israel. Verse 3. Every place that the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you. And I said that unto Moses too. What did he say? Whatever I gave to Moses, I am going to give you. When you make Jesus to be a partner of your life, uh, and the same promise what he gave to Moses and to Joshua, he said that I'm going to give you. Want to experience that? Remove fear. Remove the permission that you are given fear to be a part of your heart, but exchange that into the faith. Uh, and the Lord says that I'm going to give you. Verse 4. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, unto the great Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. You see the unlimited okay, way of how God deals things with the children of Israel. I'm going to give you unlimited things from wilderness to the sea and to the land. Everything will be yours. Was fine. There shall not any man be able to what? Stand before thee all the days of thy life. Talking about anxiety, talking about fear. The Lord says, you invite Jesus to be a part and parcel of your life. And I'm telling you in faith, the Lord says, uh, there shall not be what? Any man, any man, any man to be able to stand before in the, all the days of your life. Uh, and I was there with Moses, so will I, will I be there with you? I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That is the beautiful promise. If you engulf your life with fearlessness or with faithfulness to God. Verse well, 6. Be strong. When you have fear, you're not strong, right? When you have faith, like David, you can be strong. And the Bible says, be strong and have good courage. When you have fear, 
You don't have courage, just like Saul, right? But you have faith. You have courage. Be strong and have a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers, and I want to give it to them. He says, I swear that I want to give it to them. If you and I chase away the permission that you are given to fear and engulf yourself with faithfulness in Jesus Christ, the promise is yours today, now. Be of a strong and good courage. Verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous uh, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it from the right hand uh, or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. The only condition given in the book of Joshua chapter 1. What is that? Follow the commandments of the Lord. And I will give you everything. I will be on your side. Uh, you will never wander. You will enjoy every blessings of life. Uh, anxiety and fear has no place uh, with the children of God. Verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day in and day out. And there may us observe to do according to all that is written therein. Uh, for then they shall make thy way prosperous. And then uh, thou shalt have good success in your life. Do you want good success? The Bible says, keep the word. Last but not the least, verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not be afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. What a beautiful promise that God has been bestowed upon each one, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Choose you this day what you want to serve. Faith or fear. Fear will be able to ruin our lives all along the day, which takes you into negativity of life. But faith in Christ, in obedience to his commandment, will be able to take you to the land of inheritance where you can be able to taste success in every angle of your life on this earth till the last breath of our life. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to urge each one of you, have Jesus with you. Amen. You'll never participate. He will go before you as just there with Moses and Joshua. He will go with each one of our lives. And I thank you. You will be one of the most successful and happiest person on this whole earth. And even though we die on this earth because of sin, I'm telling you very honestly, the Lord says, I go home to prepare a place for you. Because I know that where you are, where I am, I want you to be there also. May God bless each one of us as we contemplate on this beautiful topic for us called faith over fear. May he give us an opportunity. The Lord will be there with us forever and ever. And if it is his will, and if he is going, going before us on this earth, we will be able to live a joyous and a faithful and a fearless life. And that's my prayer for all of you this afternoon. God be with us. Amen. Amen.
song enable us may the sunlight of Jesus draw on each one of our lives let us pray for you let's seek the Lord in prayer a gracious God in heaven we thank you we praise you we honor you we glorify your name for all the blessings of life yes Lord of heaven we come to your throne of grace with a beautiful message of assurance that Jesus is there with us yes Lord of heaven give us an opportunity to shun evil to shun fearfulness because we have invited Jesus to be a part of our lives. Give us an opportunity to fight Goliath. And I know that there is victory before us. Just to give victory towards Moses and Joshua. Help us to keep your commands of, of your word, O oh Father. So that we might be able to enjoy every blessings on this earth. And be a successful person in Christ. And be able to live as a testimony. And thousands of people might have an opportunity to see Jesus. Thank you for being with us and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for being a part of Hopeside Church. We appreciate okay, your kind gestures to be a part of us and I uh, hope uh, you have been blessed by you know, today's program. Continue to uphold us in your prayer uh, so that we could always uh, uh, you know, do the best of our ability to serve God and serve all of you. Uh, does anyone has any prayer requests? If you want any visitation, Bible study, please do contact us freely. Uh, we'll be ever willing uh, to serve you okay, in this last days of time. Once again, I want to thank uh, all of you for being with us. God be with each one of us. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. I'd also like to welcome uh, our guest today. Today, we are also celebrating Sarah's birthday. And uh, God has been so gracious to her and uh, although she wasn't feeling much well, uh, she, she made it a point to come to Ooh. church and get God's blessings. She also invited her friends here. Um, um, Brother Frank is here with us. Brother Aaron, thank you co for coming again to this church and it's a blessing when you join us. We also have Sister Rose with her and um, Sister Patricia. Um, they also have a beautiful baby that uh, has come here. Um, he's so... Uh, it's a joy to see babies, you know. They bring life into our church. Thank you for bringing baby here. And um, Sarah, we wish you many more happy returns of the day and may God bless you abundantly and fulfill all your heart's desires according to God's wish. And those, for those who are here, let's join and have a lunch on variety of food is also available here. We also thank the online viewers, Pramila Akka and Lalita Akka, auntie. Thank you so much for joining us. May you all be blessed. Come for lunch. <laughs> Pastor says come for lunch <laughs> and visitors uh, you can uh, you're invited to write your names here on the note that guest we book. have guest book yeah the guest book that we have in the entrance of our church thank you all yeah, once I again was, yes I said I wish I could come and join your lunch <laughs> please, please come I'm sorry Please, Please come. come. Please come. Or we can send a parcel to you for your account. Ah, there we you have go. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But well, Pastor, your sermon was excellent today. It was very As always. And appropriate. And that's what we need. So thank you. Thank you, Akka. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for yeah. your praise. Yeah, thank you for your praise. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Is Sister Mary there? Yes. Yeah, she's ever okay. Mary, ever busy, like Martha. Wishing, wishing, <laughs> wishing Sister Mary a belated happy birthday. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Mary, yeah. Mary, Mary, Mary. Yeah. 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 Come here, come here. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to see you. See you. We, we missed you, Benna. Where are you? There, there, there. Okay. I am there yeah, on yeah. Zoom, but uh, actually uh, you cannot Her video see. is not showing, but... Oh, wow! My wow. goodness, wow. Well, my loving sister, thank you so much. And your prayer and support we, is all we miss appreciated. You. Uh, and God yeah, bless you and your last week. Thank you. We'll see you in person. Oh, you. Oh, see, okay. now you can see. Yeah.
Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. God bye, bless bye, all bye. of you. Yeah, bye, bye, bye.